Okay, so today we're going to be reviewing um, another Tin Hi-Fi IEM, which strangely looks a lot like the Andromedas, which we'll see in a little bit. These, these are the Tin C2 Mech Warriors. Let's talk about it. Before we get started, this thing was sent out to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're going to hear here is my own personal opinion. Just, you know, just, just putting it out there because I have to. All right, now starting with the box, we get what appears to be like a mecha unit in the front, which is cool, I guess. But anyway, inside the box, you're going to get the IEMs themselves, a cable, and some different size ear tips, as well as some paperwork. Now, if we take a look at the cable, it's one of the simpler unbraided ones with like a pretty simple design with a side by side left and right channels with an angled 3.5 millimeter jack that leads up to a pretty simple rubber splitter and ends in two pin connectors, which are, of course, on ear hooks. Now, as for the IEMs themselves, they look like a much flatter version of the Campfire Audio Andromedas or Auras, and it wouldn't be a surprise if that's who they were inspired by. Anyway, the body is very angular and made of all metal, including the inner side as well as the nozzle, though the nozzle itself is made of a different metal separate from the main body, and it, of course, does have the grill to keep your earwax out. Now, it's also sent the strap with it from, I guess, Hi-Fi Go, according to the strap, and I don't even know what it's for, but, um, thanks, I think. Anyway, here's how they look like on the head, being on the, like, medium-smaller side, not sticking out too much, but they look pretty okay. Despite being made of metal, they are quite comfortable in the ears. They're not the lightest things in the world, but they feel pretty good. For me, the shape feels perfectly fine in my ear, though it will depend for you guys, depending on, like, how big your ear is. I can imagine those with smaller ears possibly having a little bit of pressure on that back side of the curve of the inner side of the ear, as you can see here. But alas, of course, your comfort and fit will depend on the size and shape of your ear, so, you know, as usual, your mileage will vary. All right, now when it comes to the sound of these guys, these things are a little bit different than like the typical tin hi-fi sounds I'm used to, which are kind of more bass light. These things are U-shaped, so there's going to be a good amount of bass while still having some mids, less of a recession in there. Uh, V-shapes compared to U-shapes have less, more of a mid-recession, so this has not that as much. So that's good in my book. I do like U-shaped sounds. That being said, let's get a little bit more deeper into it. So at the low end, you're going to get more of that lower bass rumble versus like a stronger punch. But they're both decently there, just not bass head level strength there, you know? Not like super mega powerful, but still got a pretty okay presence. The bass is being the the way it is, it's not too much. So it comes off very clean and clear, while also very warm and kind of dark due to that lower sense of bass at the bottom end. But this is also because of how it works with the tuning of the mids. The mids aren't recessed by any means. In fact, like they feel kind of forward here and there, especially as you go towards like the upper mids. So the warmth of the bass working with the mid push there is just is very, kind of, I don't know, it's just very good low oomph to the sound, and I do like that. But once again, as we get to those upper mids, it seems to be a little bit forward. Now as we get into to the highs they also go fairly like high up there being pretty bright though um, they don't go like super way up there but they still have a pretty good extension up there but at times I do think when it reaches those upper ranges it can get a little harsh not like too often but every now and then I would feel that the highs got a bit harsh which is kind of unfortunate it feels like they did want to be kind of more bright leaning the way they tuned the mids and the highs but while still giving it that lower oomph to like kind of like I don't know I wouldn't say necessarily balance things out but I guess sort of balance things out in that kind of way and what you get is a very like warm sound that's also bright at the same time so there's some brightness with a lot of that dark there if that makes sense at all especially if you're not a file you probably get it. but if you're not I hope this makes sense <laughs> the overall sound quality I should mention do make sense at the price of being like around uh, $40 and sometimes 30 bucks because they're very often found on sale but at the $40 range I do think it matches the price range in terms of like how the sound quality is it's not the most detailed in the world until you get to the highs but at the highs I do think it could be cleaner with the way it presents details it comes off kind of I don't know grainy at times so there there is that that's probably that harsh is actually now that I think about it. So, you know, there's the quality there. It's just about right for the price. Now then, as we move into soundstage, for a $30 to $40 IEM, I think it does a pretty good job in this area because the stage feels kind of like roundish with, you know, like not too long oval where there's more width than depth. I mean, yeah, there is more width than there is depth, but there's a good amount of depth to these guys um, compared to the width that I'm used to for like other IEMs. So it's more um, a closer oval, if that makes sense. Like closer to being a circle, but still being an oval. And this is really good for games. And when it comes to the height of these guys, it's also not that bad at all, which is also good for games, which I'll get into later. But uh, let's also get into the sound separation. So the sound separation, or excuse me, the imaging. So I would say the imaging is just about average for these guys. Like you do have to kind of find the sounds. And when you do find them, it's, you know, not too hard. And I think it's because of the way the sound separation is 
easiest handle due to like possibly the lack of width that I'm used to. The sounds are very close to each other and so it does take a little bit of work if you're going to be hunting for those sounds. This is just how the imaging is. Just about average. Not the greatest in the world but it does okay. I just think the way it handled the stage with the sound separation could be a little bit better. Still even then for gaming I think it did a pretty decently good job in like competitive shooter games where tracking people actually wasn't that bad because the way the sound is tuned it made it easy to track for people even as sounds got a little bit more busy. Granted when sounds got really busy it became a, a lot more difficult to like pinpoint people. It's just kind of just a lot going on but when you know not too much is going on or just some things are going on or it's very dead quiet it does a pretty good job of tracking people. I'm not like pinpoint accurate but still pretty pretty good I'd say for um, competitive shooters especially with the way it presents sound. I think the way it handles the staging and imaging for like the situation of playing those kind of games is it does a pretty good job. Even then I don't think I would recommend these to like really hardcore gamers who play a lot of comp. This definitely leans to someone who is going to be using them more casually for those kind of situations or maybe a comp player who wants to take it down a notch and like actually have some bass in their sound when they play games. If you know you know if you know you know. Typically if you play a lot of comp and you're just there you're in it to win it. Bass is not necessarily the best thing to have in those kind of games. In competitive shooters like usually it's the mid to high range that matters when it comes to tracking people in case you don't you know know what I'm talking about but you know now you know. Now then as you can imagine these things do a really good job in non-competitive games more like worldly open world kind of atmospheric sort of games just really pulls you in. Just the way the sound is tuned just works very well to give you a good sense of the world. Those low notes, those high notes, just, just does a good job. And the way it just presents everything due to the way it like presents the sound in a very 3D manner, I think it's great for those non-competitive games. So this thing's definitely better for that. But even then, if you're gonna be using for like more competitive shooter kind of games, it still does a pretty good job. It'll get the job done, you know? But uh, yeah, for 30, 40 bucks, I think this thing is a really good buy. It's a pretty good steal. And um, God, it wants, the, this price range, I can't say if it's necessarily better or worse than things in this range because oh, I don't know if you heard in my other videos or just looked around in general when you're looking for IMs. The market here at this price range from 50 and below is super mega competitive and everything is just ever so slightly different and it really comes down to your sound preferences and what you like. But for me, the way I, you know, from what I heard from these guys, it kind of reminded me a bit of like the Blonde BL03s. And if I were to compare these two, I would actually prefer these over the Blonde BL03s. Granted, you might prefer the Blonde BL03s if that's more close to what you like for your sound profile. But for me personally, I think these are these are better than them. And those things also sit at the same price bracket, surprisingly. So there's there's some food for thought. But once again, your mileage will vary depending on what your preferences for sound are, which matters, I guess, a lot more if you're going to be using them for like music and like um, non-competitive games compared to like more competitive shooter games where highs and mids are what really matter. But you know, now you know. So <laughs> with all that being said, that's all I have for today. If you don't want to buy these guys, I'll leave a link down in the description. I do think it gives me a kickback to help me survive in this YouTube landscape where um, the ad revenue is slowly getting worse. So I'm uh, making less for from YouTube. I've never made that much, to be honest. I think I'll make a video addressing how much I make. It's not a lot, guys. But, you know, um, that being said, I guess I'll see you guys next time.